What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Got some mythical beasts and Demion duels for you guys to check out. A very, very scary deck. And my duelist intuition is telling me that it's going to be a tier one deck just because of how strong the turn one plays are in this deck. Also, this is like one of the only pendulum decks ever that's not really like a slave to Electromite ever since that card came out. You can even see that um, this guy's playing Pot of Extravagance. So hypothetically, he could banish his one copy of Electromite. Even if he does, it's not that big of a problem. Problem. One of the cool things about running the Mythical Beast cards is that their effects are not hard once per turn, and it does mean that you actually get yourself a nice hand trap in this archetype in the Mythical Beast Garuda. This card is good as a hand trap, and it's good as a pendulum scale because as a pendulum scale, it's basically just kind of like Archfiend eccentric. It's a simple MST pop you one of your opponent's cards, but as the hand trap, it actually activates from the hand, and it's kind of like Gamma or Fantastic Dragon. It's a hand trap that, you know, is not going to be stopped by Card by the Grave because it never goes to the graveyard it special summons itself by removing three spell counters and then it can actually bounce one of your opponent's monsters that they just special summon so it's very very difficult to deal with and it really is good against like extra deck monsters your opponent summons colossus who cares you just summon it and then bounce your opponent's colossus now they just lost that monster and they gotta make another one and you get a body on board to defend yourself but you guys will see the turn one boards that i'm talking about Pot of extravagance used right off the top to get you that plus. And now he's activating Mythical Institution, going to probably get like Jackal. Jackal's going to summon the Cerberus back. You're probably used to seeing some of these plays in Pendulum Magicians. However, he summons uh, the Big Jackal from his deck using Little Jackal, which is obviously nice. Little Jackal is already online, just in case his opponent wants to use a hand trap here. He can use Little Jackal or Big Jackal's effect to negate it because it has four counters on it. So he's already got some negation on his board with really not doing much at all all but it's fine he has he has yet the pendulum summon or really to use anything he's going to use the servant Servant's going to get him a copy of the uh, Sorcerer Supreme. That's another negation. Now it's time to Pendulum Summon. And boom, one, two, three copies of Jackal back on field. Again, Jackal not a hard once per turn. So I think multiple copies does benefit you. And he's activating Terraforming and then the Citadel. So when you look at his final board, I believe that I counted this out to be 10 cards. So this is a plus one, which is like generally what like Salaman Great, uh, Salaman Great max out at. So it's legitimately tons of advantage. But it's not just that every single one of these jackals on the field has four counters and you can read jackal it says once per turn when your opponent activates a monster effect quick effect you can remove two spell counters from your field negate the activation and if you do destroy that card not a hard once per turn and all of them have tons of negate like all of them have tons of counters on them so each copy can negate something so if your opponent has a bunch of monster effects you're going to be able to take down all of them and he still has sorceress supreme which basically is that F.A. Don Dragster for a Speller Trap. So, I mean, he went plus five. He has uh, obviously an OTK already on board if his opponent doesn't commit to the field. But then at the same time, he has a resistance to evenly match and stuff like that because he has a Sorcerer Supreme. So, Ultra Guy's probably going to lose automatically going second. I'm not really sure. I would have negated one for one. I'm not sure why because his opponent gives him even more spell counters. I have no idea why he allows any of this to happen. He could have simply stopped the Milu Seek. He could have negated that effect he could have negated the search effect like all of this could have actually been negated to be honest i'm not sure why he doesn't do any of that but um you know whatever I think he was he was feeling pretty comfortable knowing that he could simply summon another copy of Sorcerer Supreme and he could just like nuke his opponent's board. Even the multi faker, none. I wouldn't have allowed any of this honestly. I just would have negated um, Milu Seek that you never would have gotten to multi faker and that would have been a wrap right then and there. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. He's going to use Sorcerer Supreme from the Pendulum Scale, nuke his opponent's entire board, and <laughs> that is basically game. And the cool thing about Sorcerer Supreme is it does activate under like skill drain. I mean even if your opponent has like monarchs erupt because it activates from the pendulum scale like it can activate under things like monarchs erupt and skill drain so it's a very difficult card to actually stop you can see right there it's going to power through his opponent's um well, his opponent's empty field because he did, you know, he obviously nuked it. Second duel is against Salaman Great. So I'm not going to lie. He is opening the nuts in these duels, mainly because he's going first and he's opening with Pot of Indulgence. I think if he went second against Salaman Great, he probably would have got washed here, to be honest, because Salaman Great opened, he opened pretty good. And um, his top three off of his uh, Foxer, uh, Foxy is going to get him a plus. So he opened pretty good and he does not do the pop off here, mainly because his little jackal got negated. However, he has that hand trap, man. That Garuda is, it's so hard to 
stop and you can see his opponent has called by the grave he's ready for a hand trap but he's not ready for this hand trap and really i thought the salam great player was gonna fuck it up a lot of times when i watch salam great players play i'm just like oh my god how are you so bad this deck is so fucking easy to play but no he plays this out perfectly he drops roar into the graveyard goes for style yo um, I didn't necessarily like this. He goes for Fennec instead of Jack Jaguar. It's okay because, I mean, it gets some fusion of fire. The problem is he's not going to be able to fully combo out because uh, he, I think he's going to Reincarnation Link uh, very soon. Yeah, he goes for the Reincarnation Link um, using his style. So actually, no, he didn't misplay. He should have went for Jack Jaguar and just simply gave up the uh, fusion of fire. This way, he would still have another monster on board. But it doesn't matter. His opponent senses that this is the last extender he has. He's going to summon that Garuda from his hand. He's going to simply bounce the copy of a Sunlight Wolf to his hand. And now the Salaman Great player is left with nothing. He's got um, Rage and Roar, but he don't have a Salaman Great Link monster on field. Even if he would have done this on the first copy of, um, of Sunlight Wolf, he still would have been screwed anyways. Because he wouldn't have had any natural extenders. And Stallion cannot go in or Stallion cannot go into any of the Link monsters by itself. You need another monster. So him having this hand trap. This mythical beast Garuda just really screwed Salaman Greats over. Called by the Grave, obviously super terrible against Pendulum decks. And then all he has is the one copy of Rage to disrupt them. But if he does give up Rage, that's his only monster. He's giving up his Foxy. He can summon it back from the graveyard. But he also has to kind of make sure he survives this turn. Mythical beasts are monsters that are, you know, pretty damn strong. 2400 attack, uh, 2800 attack. The ability to Pendulum summon and summon a bunch of monsters. He's going to go Rage. He uses it on a pendulum scale i probably would have went after one of the monsters that's already on field because yeah man your opponent uh, can obviously just beat the crap out of you with the monsters that are already on the field and you might end up losing that way so i believe that uh, this will be um the final turn of the duel i could be wrong about that but i'm pretty sure that i'm not i don't know about some of the other um mythical beast monsters like i think that was basilisk i don't think i don't think you necessarily need that one i think the main ones are jackal cerberus and then like garuda he's going to nuke his opponent's entire board getting sorcerer supreme on there gives them enough damage to simply otk to salaman great player even if the salaman great player would have not gone for finnick and would have, would have uh, gone for the standard jack jaguar play it doesn't honestly matter as soon as he went for the uh, reincarnation link he was almost certainly gonna drop garuda and he was going to simply bounce sunlight wolf and he was basically just fucked from there so you guys can see that this deck does have a whole lot of power and in this second duel there was no um electromite even summon i don't know if it was actually banished or if it was just still sitting in the extra deck but it's not a card. It's a card that helps, obviously. But it's not a card that you absolutely have to have. And then this hand trap, man. This thing is actually kind of scary. And again, we are getting these Endymion cards in two months. So it's not going to be that far out. Anyways, let's check what the deck list actually looks like. All right, so this is what the deck looks like on paper. You know, I hope they actually reprint some of these uh, Mythical Beast cards in the Structure Deck. I think that that would make this Structure Deck sell extremely well, a la um, Soul Burner, because some of these cards are from Extreme Force, and I know that Mythical uh, Mythical Beast Master Cerberus is uh, Secret Rare, and then also Big Jackal is, I believe, an Ultra Rare. Heck, I think even one more of these guys is like a high rarity. I'm not sure if it's like a or what but um yeah basilisk this card is only a one of i said i wasn't sure if this even needed to be played but i'm i'm happy to see that he is only playing one copy i guess you do need to keep your names up for your mythical beast if you're going to run things like uh, pendulum paradox this card is one that adds two pendulums back uh, from your uh, from your extra deck face up to your hand however it has to be two different monsters like they gotta have different names how and they have to have uh, the same skill all mythical beasts have um you know scale four so it does work with them as long as you have different names names then you're perfectly fine i think pot of extravagance works fine in this deck you know if you do happen to banish your election mites like whatever it's really not that big of a deal if you don't banish it then obviously it's something that you can go into personally if i was going to run two traps this is just me and from my testing in this format and granted you know these cards will come out in a little bit of a different format actually not that's not a guarantee we might get this under the same ban list that we have now i personally would go with solemn judgment a solid warning i just feel like that stops like enough stuff especially if you're already opening 
with boards where you have Sorcerer Supreme to stop, like, to be one negation. And then you have, like, maybe one or two Jackals on field to be two and three negations. I kind of feel like, why not just play Solemns at that point? You'll essentially have, like, four negations, five negations on board. What Yu-Gi-Oh deck is actually going to beat that? I'd rather run these blanket Solemn cards that stop everything. And I personally believe that Solemn Warning and, uh, and Solemn Judgment are better than Strike right now. So that would just kind of be my two cents. But, yeah, I believe that this is going to be... Uh, a competitive deck obviously these are not the best builds they're you know still the early builds but whether you run all of the you know mythical beast cards like institution and all that stuff i think that 100 you'll be seeing mythical beasts used with endemion because there's just so much natural synergy between the uh, two archetypes